Let it start. Okay, so hello everyone. So let's start discussing group by group, like what is like the consensus and what have you discussed and what have you ref been reflecting? And then from that, we can continue. So which group want to go first, what they have discussed, what the suggestions are, or, you know, what are the kind of consensus agreement or suggestion, comment, feedback, or question that you have? And we can go either just group three, group two, group four, like that. So maybe just anyone from, okay, Mubarak. Uh, thank you. So, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. I can hear you. Okay, fine. Okay, uh, we are uh, group three, and uh, we were uh, focused on gathering uh, much of ad uh, ad related uh, data. So, uh, let me share you on the chat in this. Uh, check if this kind of uh, channels are good to consider. Like more of product specific ads. This one is uh, uh, highly focused on uh, home goods, something like that. Okay, yeah, just opening. So yeah, no, I mean, I, I think this is yeah this is exactly good uh no absolutely and actually I, oh, and now that i'm realizing there are definitely like this kind of channels that we haven't included we have included content plus but so in a way this these are exactly ads uh, that we want and then there are many many also platforms that actually are purely ad driven and I think there are some that I know also just that they post mostly images, but sometimes also text. So, but it's excellent, yeah. So uh, that was our question. If we uh, really need ad related uh, channels or ad related content, why you guys choose to give us more much of news related data? Yeah. Uh, I mean, in, in, in a way, of course, our role was very simple you know that these are we want to we want to distinguish what is ad without and what is not ad right it is and then in how is it written so if you only show one part that is just ad only sometimes you don't know but now we have other that is not ad so this helps as well right so in a way it's like if you only show just the positive case then you know it, it's, uh, it's there is uh, danger that you don't know what is not an ad, what distinguishes ad from an ad. But in this four hour, just finally arriving to the fine tuning part, that is that is okay. So I think more of uh, this kind of channels may help. May help because we have already so many in an ads, and just increasing our ads um, is what we are looking for, and this is good. But you know, you have to know it's about what are they learning in a way it's also sometimes when when it's ad only the text way of writing versus when it's like you know these are mostly what you will get are just one type of ad right but people are only selling something here um while yeah. in, in in other ads the, you know ads there are many different types so this is con basically retail almost all of them most likely will be retail now if you go add to the actually then there are others for real estate um and yeah. there are others like that so we can maximize that uh, but the other one will help us be a lot more diverse like for example big brands are you you probably won't find them here mm, yeah, probably. and uh, i'm checking uh, to get if it will give me uh, a marketplace data uh, i have asked uh, for that, but they didn't uh, give me the data. Uh, they say we have accepted your request, and I'm planning uh, this one. You mean? Uh, no, uh, Facebook Marketplace. Okay. Get, yeah. 
from there too. And also, how about scrapping GG and Gocha or some channels like that, some platforms? What, what are they? Are they uh, apps or what, what are they? I don't know them. Uh, they have a website. Web app. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if that is the case, we we have a mechanism to scrape. But yeah, I, I would say, you know, some definitely, I'm sure most of you can easily scrape. So let's scrape them as well. I think it's, you know, increasing like that is good. You know, it still is going to be limited. As I said, it's just as long as we are, we're diverse, it's not, um, it's not just, yeah, we, let's increase, let's maximize uh, from different. And that's what actually is helpful. Right, like let I think this this part is one. Let's make sure that uh, we are creative like this, just to collect from many places, download them, and then put them. Yeah, I I'm very happy with that. This is uh, from my side. If any of other team members can add, they can add. Yeah. yeah so this is good. So in terms of data, you know, for some reason we are very focused on high brands. And that's why we, it was much more of like places were known with higher followers um, and we didn't that much focus on smaller followers but then we know there are many marketplace in telegram with smaller 50,000 100,000 followers that are actually and also another one that I, I think for us Tikva was a very selection it's quality and the quality of things there are much different even just the spelling mistakes that are being made there are much more smaller than other places, but I think, you know, this complements a lot. Um, so, yeah. Good, so then uh, comparatively, then we should be, you know, with all this, I think downloading these are very easy. So by downloading most of this, we could arrive to probably a very good number of ads as well as good number of tokens. And especially for the, I mean, again, we still have to classify which type of ad is it, especially now, these ones, all of them are most likely are retail. Um, so we can really, whatever we get here, we can call it retail as, a, as the um, classification. And then real estate, we can get from channels that are only focused on real estate advertisement. And then similarly, others. I think we might, if, for example, if Telebur has a lot of followers and also advertises promotions, so that one is for communication. And some banks, if they do as well, I think yeah, there is there is a lot now. Now, now we we think about it. I mean, to be frank, I didn't think about it. So this is good. Okay, good. So what else did you discuss in your group group three? Any anyone from group three? What else in terms of like this is data enrichment? But what about you know what what do you feel now when we have one week? What can be done and you know how what kind of resources? Okay, data resources now seems it can be addressed. But what else? Abel. Okay. Good morning, uh, guys. So uh, let's see. Uh, after hearing that we have extra week, uh, we kind of attracted back to the focusing on the data as well yesterday. So uh, after being aware of the uh, increment week, we need a more clear and uh, more accurate data. And Mubarak highlighted the way we approach this. And I think it's going to uh, work out uh, in our favor. Uh, apart from that, uh, regarding the fine tuning, uh, we are kind of separated in two groups currently uh, within the, within our group so that we can progress well uh, in the fine tuning so we are handling that in a way that for example uh, half of the group work on mistral and half of the group work on llama so uh, along the way most of the things are similar especially on the fine tuning the way we approach it the way we kind of do it is similar so uh, we mostly share our uh, screen on uh, google meet and uh, try to communicate and work on it so while doing that we kind of understand what each model's uh, base feature is and uh, how the best approach is so uh, that's what we were doing so 
we honestly feel like once we have a clear data a clear data set uh, and a somewhat uh, uniform data we can fine tuning using that then we can uh, kind of create a more specific and more clear uh, rag context so after doing that <coughs> we plan to uh, kind of uh, finalize this whole thing by Wednesday or something, then uh, make it more accurate and clear uh, with the rest of the week. So that's what we are trying to do now. But I feel like it's more attainable and more uh, approachable this time around. Wonderful. Great. I, I think that's a very good one. So what, what kind of challenge do you anticipate? Like, for example, of course, there is a positivism because of many things that now you understand the details and the fine tuning and uh, similarities, differences and uh, limitations in the data and how to address it. But what other uh, limitations or challenges do you expect, like things that might crop up that we should be prepared? OK, so the, the thing is, uh, we were trying to see how the models were trained. Uh, was fine tuned to be specific but uh, there is a certain uh, tokenization lens that most models uh, try to kind of uh, work based on so there is a length of text that uh, is recommend for example if it's 512 characters the data should be uniform so uh, for example one message line should not be very long and one message line should not be very short so the uh, having a similar uh, length of uh, message lines is very helpful when training a model. And we understand that. So after seeing the data, uh, the, the lengths of the message lines are very different. Uh, one is very short and one is very long. So uh, we are concerned how we might kind of make it similar and how we might... Uh, is that for kinda... the fine tuning? Is that for yeah. du during fine tuning? Yes, during fine tuning, yeah. Before uh, while tokenization, uh, each uh, line when tokenized, it might uh, get very long and one might be very short. So during fine tuning, that have impacts on the outcome. Uh, and uh, there should be a way to kind of uh, snip through the message and put it in a kind of similar length. But uh, while doing that, we should not be uh, cutting words. We, we should not be splitting words, for example that will mis mislead the AI. So uh, when kind of splitting the message, we have to find a way in order uh, to split it um, in, in the middle of the sentence, not in the middle of the word and something. But uh, that's a, an approach to make the fine tuning more accurate and more better. That's what we find out. Again, that's algorithmic, so that's okay. So. You, you, you think like there is going to be some details that, that probably we need to think a priori um, on like these details like sentence links um, and the embedding window. Um, yeah, as, okay. exactly. Good. So okay. that are factors when fine tuning. That's, um, yeah. that's okay. really let's, factors. let's list them down. I think as we go on, we can discuss also on Tuesday, but let's list them down things that might be important, but we are sometimes overlooking. So each group could maintain a list and share every day, you know, details that they have figured out or they have understood or they have read that could be, that could affect the performance of an LLM. So these are, then it will become like a common knowledge, a common pot. Okay. So I think okay. we can create one channel in Slack where people can actually post those, you know, challenges um, or details that, we should, we should, you know, they, they have seen or observed or tested or um, read that could improve uh, the outcome. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, that, so that's the challenge you are anticipating by my side. Uh, Kero can continue. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. So morning. I think uh, two of my team members have already gave our updates. So we are working on two uh, models so i think that because of that because there is two subgroups in our group i think we can achieve more uh, so the the only additional thing that can that i can add is uh, we are con consistently working on the data cleaning uh, step because uh, we figured out that the cleaner or the more or the more quality quality the data is the more the quality 
answer or the more quality answer, the more quality output that we we get from our uh, LLM. So we are consistently going back to the drawing board and uh, working on the data cleaning step. So I think that also is going to help us a lot. So this additional week means uh, we can work more on our, uh, we can get more quality data and train our model on it. So yeah, I think it's good. Thank you. Yeah. I think that's okay. So as you know, the final part from group three, there is a positivism and uh, achievable, and uh, there is a way to increase the data, the quality of the data. And yeah, great. Thanks for the summary. Uh, Yvonne? Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Hi. Morning. So group four, we, we are currently working on the data and also strategizing. Uh, this past week, we have changed our strategies on how to work severally. Mm -hmm. So um, our tasks have been divided, and then we go to the back to the drawing board and divide the tasks again. We are hoping by um, next week we will be done. We will have done everything. So um, currently, uh, I allow me to ask a question because I am working on the LLM, but the yeah, sure. you can, you the can ask, that, you know. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. just feel so, free to ask and to do anything just for others as well. This is much more to say, like, you know, how each group would feel and what are the questions, highlights, challenges, um, and all the limitations yeah. and everything. So feel free. Yeah, go on. So, so the LLM, the, the one, the Amharic one, the one in the, in, in the Transformers, the one in the group, okay, in the docu in the challenge document, when you yes. go to try and use it in, in hugging face it actually has an error it doesn't run so i am wondering will this error affect us also when we are trying to model tune it and try to make it give us outputs and also um i had this error that is persisting when loading my llm i really don't know what to do because that is the way to load it 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 doesn't want to load I uploaded the so error. You mean you you mean the the Amharic LLM you want to load it and then it's not working? Yes, yes. It it tells me I have an a, a, some it does it tells it tells me the dot config file is not loading. Yeah. It tells me okay. I have another file from Hugging Face named dot config which I don't. So okay. If uh, so someone... has anyone has anyone? Uh, used the amharic ll uh, the llama to amharic llm from hugging face uh, to test it because i haven't therefore is, is there anyone abdul hamid or is that for that one abdul hamid or um yeah good morning everyone morning so we did try to uh, run the gary logistics model um there is a way that uh, the model has to be downloaded just loading it from the uh, hugging face wouldn't really work. So there's a certain number of steps that uh, Yvonne, you should follow. I will share you um, what I have found and then it should work. Okay, so good. So that means it will work. And have you tested it in terms of quality? Is it better? I mean, yeah, it, it, it does uh, respond in Amharic. Sometimes uh, it could be gibberish, but it, it, it's kind of good. Okay, compared to, for example, um, you GPT. know, GPT or even just there are some, for example, new Hermes, uh, noise Hermes in chats, uh, in hugging face chats, we think it's also very, very good. Um, it's from Bezdo Mistral 7B, 87B. So that means there are eight uh, mixture models, actually, a mixture of experts. So maybe just just comparing that, that would be great. Just to have an idea, are they better or are they worse than uh, an open source, another model? Of course, the other 8 b eight times 7 b is, of course, more 47 b models. It's not like the 7B models, but just just to know like how, how good they are compar comparatively. But but isn't that a big a big model? Would it like load? No, no, load? I know, but, it, but I know how much how much i mean i think 87b just simply was not good but when it's fine-tuned it was good so you know they didn't fine-tune it for amharic particularly while llama 
was fine tuned for Amharic. So just to see how far, you know, how far is is that one. So I'm not I'm not saying we compare to Lama two. I imagine it must be very good, right? So simple Lama two. So we need to have like that calibration, you know, so that we have a baseline. You know, how much are we expecting to improve? If any group improves, you know, how much have they improved over? You know the existing Lama to Amharic, for example. Just let's have that baseline measured. Um, just that's what I mean. Okay, good. So maybe just let's continue to Yuvon and then uh, Yuvon. Yeah. So reach so, out to Abdulhamid. Abdulhamid will share. So that should okay. be solved. Okay. 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 So so far that was our blocker. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And any so group four maybe uh, Rudolf is also group four or. Yes, yes. Who's group four? Okay. So then maybe just Rudolf, you can go. Okay. Good morning, Abeba. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Sorry for being late. It's um, okay. So, as my teammates have said, Yvonne has said, we, we face a problem. And throughout the whole week, uh, finally, we, we found a way. If we come with a, a strategy, uh, we think we do believe that that strategy will work for us. Um, regarding the the blockers, mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, especially regarding the fine tuning, uh, I I face the same problem with uh, with her regarding like carry uh, logistic, and uh, we will reach out uh, Abdulai so that he can help us with. Uh, her methodology. Apart from that, I try to 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 load also Lama two seven uh, B, and uh, uh, it's telling me that the the missing uh, that I'm missing uh, config data JSON. And uh, I check in in my uh, in my file. I didn't find this. Uh, and yeah. I, was, I mean, I, 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 Rob, I was, that, that one is what Abdulami said. There is a way, so he will share. So that one could be will be fixed. That's fine. So, oh, but what okay. what have you guys discussed in terms of like? Do you think it's achievable? And from the group dynamics as well as also from you know uh, the challenge that that you know um, that you have seen. What you know the strategies that you put. What are what have you identified to be key? limitations or key hindrance as well as um you know key opportunities that that is there and what's your feeling because i am asking that you you guys can actually also do a bit more those who are not amharic speakers in your own language for example in swahili or i don't know um which language you speak uh, rudolf but um uh, are there efforts there people have done can you learn from that as well just uh, to transfer knowledge in that sense? Uh, yes. Uh, I, at the beginning, I thought that it is it is an opportunity for all of us here to to be able to do that in our different languages if uh, we, we, we got the skills. So uh, regarding that, I have a, a good feeling. But right now, my feeling is uh, a kind of a low because uh, because of the challenge you are facing, but I think uh, at the end we'll have uh, all a good feeling. And okay. So uh, how how many? Uh, so how's how how many people are in the group, and how are uh, how active is it? In terms of like, do you do you think you have all the resources? You know, both in terms of the people who understand Amharic, because that will be a very big limitation, and and then as well as also the expertise there that would help to fix, for example, when issues like that happen? Yeah, we uh, we have two people in the group who understand Hamaric. Um, before I was aware about one, but today okay. I, I figured out that there is another one who understands Hamaric. So uh, she, okay. she can, yeah, that can help regarding that part. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you won't. Another, yeah. Go on. Go on, Rudolf. Yeah. Another thing is, uh, uh, sometimes we uh, we face problem to to ping the the server, to ping yeah. the server. But I know you 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 are in charge of that. So another yes. thing so, that I want to bring on 
so yeah. I don't worry too much. Uh, another thing I want to bring on is uh, I try to I try the the model Lama Guad uh, mm-hmm. 7B, and uh, I can load this one. Now uh, I would like to ask you if it is possible to to play with that uh, with that because I know our data is not yet ready uh, because we need to label in order to really play with that for the fine tuning. Is it possible to use another data set or uh, maybe find a, a, a I mean, data I, set and play with that? Yeah. Is it possible? I mean, I, I think, you know, in, in a group, what is possible and what is not possible is really the group dynamics, right? So you plan, if individuals go and do their work, the group will not achieve much But If the group strategizes, if you convince, for example, a group to say like, here is a model that, you know, I, I'm going to read about this model. It's optimized for, I don't know. So it started from similar models that we can use, for example, Llama or something. And there are lessons that I understand that language. So let me explore and come up with a strategy. You know, that's fine, right? It's, it's within the group. Like, it's not about what what is and what is not. Ultimately, it's not an individual project. It's about achieving the highest we can achieve. It is not done. I think the only thing I don't like that much is when people are taking it more as learning. You know, that is not a, the type of attitude we want to have. It's not about learning. It's about doing something, getting something done. You know, so it's not like for me my, to satisfy my curiosity because that, that's not the training for. The training is to achieve certain business objectives. And if it doesn't help you in your business objective, it, you know, it's not good here. Like... It is good for individuals, but it's not good here because here we really are optimized to try to train. Like in many trainings have their own philosophy. Um, Here we are trying to really achieve business objectives because if we believe if people learn how to achieve a business objective, every everywhere they go, they will they will be liked, they will be hired, they will be you know so that. So in that aspect, I don't mind if you convince your group why this is useful. And the group says, yeah, it's useful, go do it. I, I, I'm fine. It's not about me. It's about the business objective and how the group can achieve. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Yabeba. Okay, okay, great. Okay, so within group four, um, Yvonne and maybe others in the group four. So Yvonne, you can go on if you yes. have. So I had the my first question about the error when you try to test the model in hugging this. Will that yeah. error be a, an issue for us? As Abdul Hamid said, as Abdul Hamid said, it's not. So that means okay. he will share with your resource. That means you will load. Probably today you'll be able to load it. So that yeah. means it's not a problem because other people found their way. As Abdul Hamid said, you okay. you okay. don't need. You know, it's not necessarily that you have to load from Hugging Face. You have to follow certain steps. So when you follow those steps, I'm sure you will do it. They will not have an issue. But I think one thing sometimes I, my advice to you guys, especially those who don't speak Amharic, is that learn also, you know, you have now two advantages. One is your group members who can help you in Amharic. The other one is from your own language, there are many talents in your country and your and whoever has been working in the language that you speak, trying to do it. You can learn from them. We gave you some reference from Chinese because that's the one we, we searched and we found. And I'm sure in Kenya or in other places that people have probably tried, just like Gary has tried for, for Amharic. Can you learn something from that? You know, what is their wisdom? You know, so you can bring to your group that kind of contribution as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good. So, but I am hearing only two of you only from group four. Is Are there people from group four here? Yeah. Is that Alexander or who is the... Alexander, is that are you from Group Four? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good morning. So, what's your morning? What's your opinion? Okay, my opinion is, uh, I, I think uh, the model related are raised by Rodolf and uh, Yvonne. I want to talk about the data related part because uh, okay. here the the data is a is a big asset for doing either returning or uh, rag part. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, we have faced a number of challenges we are in the data preparation uh, stage. The first one is uh, raised by 
I think Abdul Hamid or uh, any group three members, most the data that the, you provide us uh, in Tikva data around, around 4,000 up to 6,000, I explore it. Most of our uh, news related, uh, even though when you provide the resource yesterday, uh, taking that and add me related to something from that, I, I can't get. Uh, due to that, we face a uh, number of challenges to get ads for our data. In the other thing is, uh, from in our group, there may be, I don't know, Rodolf is our group leader. I don't know why raised our uh, problems here. I don't list uh, Mr. X is actively good or Mr. Y is not actively good. But in a team, there lacks in coordination. The, the big opportunity for us is continuing the project, this like project for the next week. Uh, even though uh, we, we should uh, do something for this week. So if you uh, add some suggestion and yep. data related and we are Rudolf also involved here. Yep. Uh, no, I, I mean, I think just to be clear, Rudolf didn't mention Mr. X is good, Mr. Y, uh, Miss Y is not good that I think they raised just the issue that they encountered with the model. So, you know, you can take it. It's actually a positive light they highlighted also in the group four so that, you know, that that clarity. But in terms of data, I think as um, Mubarak mentioned and also um, like I think Kerod and um, Abel has highlighted, I think there is definitely a way we can increase the number of ads. Um, I think, yeah, we haven't seen it that much. I think we were just much more focused on um, brands with a reputation, but I think there are brands, sorry, channels with a reputation, but there are channels with actually very much dedicated to advertisement only, and we can collect from that. And I think our team will be able to also provide as many as possible to, to work, you know, to, so, we, I, I am hopeful now that there is a lot more ads that we can get in Amharic, and that should be that should complement. So, Alexander, that hopefully will address. I don't know how big it will be, but it will address many of the limitations. So, we probably can reach maybe up to a hundred thousand ads, uh, which means in terms of token, if we assume each of them has ten tokens, so we can get up to a billion tokens in ad part um that is good so i think you know the data part could be solved now the other part is within the group you guys are disadvantaged because two people don't speak um amharic so but then you are also an advantage because they can speak their own language and they can check and reference you know some work that is done in their language and bring the knowledge so as long as you are convinced that the group is you know good to go and uh, it has it can achieve something be strategic because it, you know if a group three for example does something you know doing that one without having an advantage will not help you but doing something else that would actually you learn something specific about you know you try a different method or you know you kind of do that i think it would help as long as you are convinced uh, that there is it's positive that we should be you know you you guys can stay as group and you can actually add other people for example there may be other groups who might say like okay we are probably in a disadvantage it is better if we you know are added to other groups to support in that sense you know so just think about it you know you can think about it we don't have to decide today we can decide on monday but that's what i am saying it's almost almost always focus not on people but focus on the business objective and what disadvantage and disadvantage you have to achieve the business objective and um i think in terms of data we it is highlighted, but there is there seems to be a way. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. We will we, we'll try. Yeah, discuss okay. and you know objectively reflect. Look yeah. your pros and cons, and you know advantage disadvantage, and then come up with a strategy. On Monday, we will we will if needs to be. You know, we can either add people into your group, or um, you can be you can tell you know go and contribute in another group. But I think it seems to me. It's a matter of like how much have you achieved so far and what was the struggle and in looking for, would it be a disadvantage or advantage to continue as it is? Could you address the limitations that you have? 
for example, could your group have solved the problem that um, Yvonne and Rudolf encountered, for example, this uh, part of the, you know, the config thing, you know, yeah. if there was another person could that could help address that, it could have helped the group to accelerate. So things like that, think objectively, really, really, you know, the, in work environment, the most important part is to not at all reference a person, refer the objective of why you are in the same place, why you are a group in the first place. And, you know, every terminology you use should be about is the work that is done, not the person that is doing. And um, so I think that that will help. I mean, this is from my own experience after, you know, couple, you know 15 more years um, in teams, it is the most important advice that I would give is that really reference, don't reference the person, but the work done by the person can be referenced and that can be criticized. The work that is done about by a person can be criticized, but the person cannot be criticized in a sense because the person, you know, uh, may have many, many reasons. So just that that part is important. But yeah, I think um, just confirming no one here said X, Y, good or not. It was just the, okay. the, the issues was, that they yeah, thank, the issues thank. That But it, there is an opportunity to reflect their ideas and the situations. Uh, how to go in good exactly. problems. They have discuss with it, objectively discuss with it in a group, and for Monday, you can prepare, you know, with your suggestion. It's when we talk on Monday. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, so Fanuel? Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. Hi. Which group can you hear where are you? Yes, I group can, one. can hear you. Group one. Okay, so what is yeah. group one's thinking? Uh, so uh, for the past week, we have been focusing more on you know data cleaning and uh, for the model we've been trying to find a, you know a better tokenizer because like in our thinking like that's the most important one because if uh, the words that are provided are not tokenized properly it would affect the model's output in the meaning of the statements that it provides so that was the thing that we were focusing on and last night i think we found a better one since the Gary one didn't actually, you know, give us the results that we wanted. Yeah. Uh, but I was focusing on, I mean, when we were given tasks, mine was, you know, trying to, you know, create a more full stack application. So I was focusing on the front end and back end part. Yeah. And I have two questions about that. So yeah. one is to the something Yvonne mentioned. And uh, I also been following, like trying to load the Gary model from Hugging Face. And I also was trying to read how to do it. And I also found Abdul Hamid's comment on the discussion part of it. But my question is, like, did they not do it properly when they published their model, or are they, you know, is it one way of doing it? Because, like, if you want to use their model, you have to download it and use it locally. But I, was yeah, I think to... I think some some people do it because they are not allowed to publish the model. Maybe Lama, for example, you have to be registered um, within Facebook, right? So, and things like that maybe. And then others, I know, even Fi, yeah, Microsoft released one. Fi, you have to agree on something. So you have to so you have to actually remote fetch the codes remotely. So the codes may not be the codes they write is not included there so they haven't included the code maybe in the um, yeah in the files, like mm -hmm. in the file, file to be able to be but, but you know there, there are mod model weights and then codes right so model yeah. weights are just weights but the codes that operate you know are usually what is in, in hugging face hugging face can you can upload everything so they probably haven't i mean abdul hamid should speak more than um, but I think there are definitely cases where people are not putting everything in one. So you have to actually, when you load the hugging face, you have to probably issue a command that says like remote possible or something. I think there is this type of com kind of uh, yeah. that that will fetch from a remote place um, if they specify. So it could be any one of them. It could be just that they haven't loaded. It could be just they have loaded the usual way, but the usual way doesn't allow them to for something something but let's abdul hamid has solved it so i would say just abdul hamid can really help because he has inferred from it so that means it yeah. works there's a way 
Yeah, because like I've been able to use the other models from Hugging Face by directly yeah. accessing them, but for this one, it was weird. Maybe it's a yeah. payable thing. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah as, as Merkida said, you can download, but need to ask for access. They will give you a reply in an hour, so you can clone the repo from Hugging Face. So I think Absolutely. it seems, yeah, they need, yeah, so they need probably some access. You need to have some um, ask for it. They probably want to do that because they want to know who's using it, maybe. Uh, so the other question is about regarding the data, I mean, gathering more data. So there are other uh, Telegram channels, but they are a bit scammy, but yeah. they have catching ads too. So yeah. can we use those? Like, yeah, as, they as, do as Mubarak, exactly. As Mubarak yeah. said, you know, uh, he mentioned one, the one, for example, this summer Mercato or uh, like that. And, and there are many uh, like that. And I Those know also some. Yeah, so I also know uh, some in um, uh, mostly, I think this exactly retail. Uh, a lot of them are retail and some are um, on, let's say, real estate. Um, but then Telebur and banks have also promotions. Can, we can consider even if they're not directly ad, but they are promotions. Um, in, for example, the Telebur one, almost they write mm -hmm. in America, if I'm not mistaken, and they have lots of followers. Yeah. So these are high brand. So by I think we you know we haven't just thought about that. So this is good. We can definitely enrich that. Yeah, we should. Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, the diversity we should about... worry. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I mean, the, the, does the content matter? I mean, like this yeah. bank channels and deliver like they're usually you know legitimate ads. But can we use also it's, like just for about sake legitimacy? Of it's not about legitimacy. Mm -hmm. It's more about it's more about what an ad is you know of course uh, we don't want it we don't want you know if it's just a retail someone if it's a format is an ad it's fine of course if it's something completely known if it looks like an ad but it's not an ad it, it is that is a bad quality um but if it's just you know an ad i mean the, the, the you know if you think of it what do we want we want a how for a product given i we want the llm to relate given some context that it wants to generate that now it know if it knows ad already then it can learn from context based on its other knowledge so it knows amharic and it knows an ad and it knows what you know we didn't tell it which ones which ads are performing but at least it knows it has seen many ads so you can think of that to be when then you contextualize it it can generate something in the format of an ad so as long as they are not misleading, as long as they are promotion and uh, ad and not not contain toxic words, um, you know, then I think then it's fine. But of course, that's what I'm saying. The better, the you know, the more respectful. I mean, in the wild case, that's a problem. So we can't collect from every Telegram group that we find. I mean, that would be could maybe just make it very very dangerous in a sense that. Like, you know, it, it might just say some things that we don't want in our Yeah, yeah. Heart. I mean, I, yeah, so it's not toxic or anything, but, you know, their aim is to gather more people, so to make people join their channel. So this is fine. If it works for them, probably, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's Hachi, most of that's why I mentioned yeah. it. Yeah. Hachi is good. Hachi is good. I mean, that's what we're going to learn. Hachi. Right? Hachi yeah. and uh, formats and things like yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the more, at, like uh, exactly logis and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean that's actually really better. Yeah, mm, yeah. So we're yeah. trying to learn from no, everyone no. who who thinks how to make an ad, right? So it's a collective wisdom we're trying to learn. So yeah. So the intent doesn't really matter, but the content yes. does. In a way, the diversity matters. So we don't want it to be just only on one retail, but we want it to be, you know, different different diversity. Otherwise, it's just always you tell it to generate for. I don't know, um, um, uh, hospital and still trying to sell you, you know, something. And so we don't want something, that. Yeah. 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 But so as long as the diversity, we make sure that the di we have enough diversity, then it should be fine. Okay. So that's group one. So do you feel, uh, maybe others in the group one, how do you feel? Is that Biniam is also in group in group one? Yeah, yeah he is. He, he can okay. elaborate more on that. Okay. So how do you feel 
compared to the challenge, what have you achieved so far? And I know that in the front end, Manuel was saying. So yeah, let's let's know. Hello. 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 Yeah, we can hear you. I think I'm having. Okay. Maybe Binyam has some issue. Abraham, in which group are you? Am I audible? No. You are audible. Uh, go on. Okay, Binyam. I am from group five. Okay. Maybe should so I wait for Binyam to? Exactly. Next will be group five. Okay, Binyam. Okay, how are you? Uh, I have some questions. Good. Yeah. As a, as a team, um, I was tasked with, you know, studying more about, you know, how to find the model models exactly. And uh, I was able to train a model, uh, which is a lot of tools. Yeah, with an open source, uh, you know, data set that I found on the internet. And the data was quite so small. It was about like, uh, 4,000, you know, rows of uh, conversation. So this is the question of the so finally, uh, after the training was finished, it kind of recognized, you know, that I was talking in Amharic, and it kind of got the context that I was talking, what I was talking about, but I think it was lack of knowledge. So some, yeah, it could not answer my question, and it was a bunch of people, uh, the model output. And I think that has something to do with, you know, pro templating, uh, if I'm not mistaken. The template of my prompt was not exactly like structured. So yeah, uh, since the data was structured and it was you know like the model knew that it was a question and answer, it was easy for it to you know recognize what I was talking about. So when it comes to our data, uh, it's you know heavily unstructured, so uh, we cannot SFT or supervise the finding on that data. If I am not mistaken again, so I'm not really sure how to you know make it actually you know, work. On, so on a data, you know, we had like a huge concatenated PHP file that we used to train the model, but output was so bad again. And that also had something to do with the tokenizer school. Yeah, so my main question is that, uh, you know, if the data is so unstructured, will this require, you know, a reinforcement learning from human feedback at the end? Because it might not actually give us what we want, the results that we want. Um, and also since, you know, since other models such as, you know, Mr. 7 billion, uh, while having 7 billion parameters, they surpass, you know, every other, like they surpass Lama 13B on all benchmarks. It's something that I found out recently. So maybe if we can train on that one too, um, uh, like, can we train on a model? and find out which is better and then use that one. Okay. So, so when you say train, you mean fine tune, right? So, I, Because I misunderstood. Yeah, okay. Fine -tune. okay. So, and then you were fine tuning on, on this, on that. So I think normally, exactly, you know, it's it's not a, it, it's per se, definitely Israel has an advantage, right? Uh, it came, of course, after Lama. And it is the same people who did Lama, who did Mistral, in a way, were in Facebook first, and then they became independent and went to France, and then they did Mistral. So, you know, they, they have an advantage. And they definitely use a different type. They use mixture of uh, experts, um, and they kind of like... So the, the question is, it's not about moving, per se, from model to model, but now, what do you want to gain? It's not just only that, like maybe just a very smaller model, um, when it's fine-tuned for a particular context, it might be well, it might work. So that's why I would really like even some groups to try uh, stable AI models, which is 1.6, right? In, in a way, it is about as a group, so other people are using um, Mistral, so you know that, if, of course, if you really strongly believe in it, you can go for it. I mean, as like it's, you can convince the group, but I would say it's less about really trying different models, but more being strategic, understanding exactly in the context of like how's my embedding, how's my tokenizer, 
how's my you know the, the original data structure uh, affecting it how is the you know uh, like can i check can I, can I do quick checks to to find out something you know does it have a, an advantage for me for amhai if i do it something or not you know? so the more you do that the better you understand you know it's it's it really think of it as surgery and debugging you're debugging it and one in one time in one part and in another part you're trying to solve some problem the more you are good at debugging also of course then you learn quickly how to distinguish another model so you can then you know even on tuesday wednesday then by now knowing everything you can test multiple models now with that with that formalism instead of just trying only one by one right so i am happy i think it's it's fine and definitely uh some models are much more have an advantage than others but uh, okay so maybe me, there is a noise in the background um Binia. so i don't know if i if i address the question but the the part is um our unstructured telegram data can be once you identify which ones are added and which ones are not added you can really use it in many ways to find you one is to help it to make it distinguish the first layer is to distinguish add within add and then add context so you give it a context say like there, there are ads here and there are no ads there you know which one is an ad and then you it's a, because you know which ones are ad so you can train it another part is that's one supervised teaching because you have the classifications another one is you give it half an ad and ask it to extend the remaining and then you give it that one again because the remaining of the ad you have it you know so there are many ways to 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 start once you classify ads to train in a fine-tuned manner. Does that make sense? No, the BNM, if you are talking, I think we only hear the, back, the background from you. Okay. So, uh, about, uh, about the data structure? Uh, I have it's, it's very hard to hear from you. Uh, it's up and down. That's like, you know, Gary used to carry used the data type in a conversation with me. people or question it's, it's very hard. the model knows Gideon. what it should do. So Gideon, it's very hard. I would like to know if it is. It's very hard to hear because you go up and down uh, the it voice. Is a problem with you from Uh, I think he's delayed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you you are, I think. Maybe, maybe you can we, we you can talk later. Just try to fix the background if you can. I think there's a quite a noise in the background. I'll get okay. If you can mute for now, great. Okay. So, um, are there anyone from Group One uh, who wants to add? anything um on what Biniam and Foundman has said Elias my adult yeah you are uh the blocker that we have been said uh, previously was on the tokenizer we couldn't yeah. find uh, 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 good tokenizer. So we last night we divided and uh, some that some of the team tried to use uh, Llama tokenizer, and 
same team, another team, try to uh, customize our own uh, tokenizer with using sentence space. And uh, yeah. we, I think we got a good result last night. So I think we'll be good afterwards. Okay, so the sentence piece seems to work well, right? Yes, the sentence piece and uh, the llama too. The llama uh, tokenizer is working mm -hmm. fine too. So we will compare the result and use uh, either of them. So mm -hmm. that's what we are now. Uh, mm -hmm. About the data, uh, Dini was saying he found another data uh, from another like 40 channels and can we use that? Uh, I, I don't think they are apps, but some Telegram data. Mm -hmm. So, so I think, to... <laughs> which one? So, so repeat it again, sorry. Uh, I was distracted. Uh, uh, he said he, there are uh, another file from around 40 channels that he gets, yeah. which are not uh, actually related to, uh, exactly related to ad. So can we train on that yeah. to make so, them Exactly. Them? So I think as long as yeah. it's Amharic, as long as it's yeah. Amharic, the first yeah. part is that whatever data you get, not only even Telegram, but anything else that is balanced, because if you just have now, you know, there is there are the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, for example, has so much in Amharic. If you keep yeah. using only that, it will give you a problem. Mm -hmm. Because I mean it learns okay, it so you can use that one for the base model to try to increase the base model's accuracy of Amharic. But in the fine tuning, you must make sure that, you know, you are not biased by that. But you can use any Amharic text that you find. I mean, we want, and I would link some more, like I, I know a couple where they have lots of tokens, like, um, you know, lo lots of Amharic, you can use it. Media, news, religion, politics, you know, sport. You can use it for the base model and then the ads, more or less reserve them for fine tuning i think that's fine yeah so we there's no restriction in this in this project the, the restriction is that make it work that means try it make it work okay. just to be clear another thing we're not yeah. supposed to our model is not supposed to uh, be perfect on question and answering uh, it, it doesn't have to, Since it doesn't it doesn't have have to. to. we don't have to yeah, yeah. Since it only has to, you know, it only has to be yeah. good at extracting, you know, like understanding a context, and then generating an ad. So that's the business yeah. objective. So as long, but it needs to identify, for example, what is the context. For example, if you give it a lot of text, as we as we just gave you, it's a very some simple dummy brief we gave you. It's not, you know, normal briefs might be longer, so you might need to understand. So even that one will work now in this week, I will update a little bit of, you know, the um, how to go from now, once you have a good base model, how to go to actually generating a very good um, ad. There are many strategies. One strategy is of course, to not just directly generate an ad, but to generate uh, kind of, it's called flow engineering. So the in the same folder, I will copy the the project document and then I give it a different title. So for you, even if you are working on the same project, I think the, the project title will be slightly shifted this week and it will be flow engineering. Um, so flow engineering is one um, that has, that actually follows a flow in terms of doing something. And I think, you know, some of you might know already flow engineering in other contexts, but so one of the state of the art, for example, code generator now that beats even, um, GPT-4 and alpha code is, is in using flow engineering. So we, we'll give it that sexy name for it. And it's about not generating directly what you want, but generating step by step some things in the middle so, such that you improve the outcome, you know, you, you, you are able to generate a very good ad, right? So that means first, maybe you generate a concept. Second, maybe you generate, you know, and then you debug that one, whether the concept is good or not. Then second, you generate like, you know, tone and like that, you know, so you, you might be generating step by step in a flow um, to get what you want. So, but that one we will discuss in the next week, but it's the same project, um, you know, doing, um, doing the same thing. So I would say use anything and our business objective is really given a context, 
information about a brand, a brief, you know, any other uh, information, generate an ad. It doesn't have, even if it's no good for, you know, summarization or if it's no good for question and answer, it's fine. So I, I know that, Binia, uh, uh, sorry, um, you were out, um, right? So, but it is, but it's just you, yeah, the question, the answer, I already answered it for you. I just only explained more. But yes, you. We are not expecting you to help us. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, the the reason I asked that is after the we are doing the first uh, phase of the fine tuning, we are just asking it for for some text, and we are expecting some perfect answers, like B said. So yeah. we're not supposed to expect that. Uh, yeah. We are going. To, we are ex We should expect after the. So supervised learning after labeling our data and yeah. train it, it should. Yeah, yeah. so may, maybe maybe ask it instead of question and answer, ask it more about to tell you, uh, to generate you an ad, you know, about, you know, uh, Binium, uh, uh, his new product called, you know, um, LLM uh, in Amharic, something like that, you know, it's just more ask it to generate something um, than, a question and answer because a question in i mean it knows a question and answer based on the knowledge but it might not be fine-tuned properly to hold conversations and contexts so i think yeah just train it for one specific thing and ask it in that way or evaluate it in that way better that way okay thanks yeah so in terms of memory um binyam that one yes it's like when you go to rag you definitely, given that it may not be uh, the Lama 2 has 4096, and when you have a context that are much more, much more than that, you might need, yes, to implement um, context, you know, memory that, that provides it, because you have to chunk, now you have to divide your long text, your long brief or input into context, and then, you know, you have to implement memory then. If if the context or the brief or whatever the information have can fit in the inside the the context window, we don't need to. But yeah, in general, yes. I hope that answers. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. And later, if you if you have a, a clear background, Biniam, you can go. Um, if you have still questions or comments or feedback. Okay, so then let's go to Fanuel. Uh, do you want to say something before that? Okay, go on, Biniam. No, yeah, okay. Biniam, you can go. Um, okay, so yeah, this is one of the And as uh, in you know, uh, about 40 other channels that are, you know, much more filling up. Than the ones that were given to us. So, yeah, it's not a problem to be Yeah, so, as I told you, to space into So, and other question is that when we first, you know, plan to do the ad, we first have another ad data and then put it on a vector database, or like the ones we create. So is it It is very hard, Binyam, to hear. It's like you you come and go, and so it's almost hard to understand. Um, Maybe just type it. In that case, it's easier. Um, or, or just like, yeah, it's like I think I, I couldn't hear because like some important words are missing when the sound goes down. Um, I think what this reminds me about data is that, of course, we need to have. Um, uh, so I will create an S3 folder and attach it with to everyone's uh, machine 
please put all of your data in one place in some structure called clean raw and stuff so that others can use maybe you can label it just the group one data group two data group three data but it's important that we also don't fragment let's because as you know data is the heart of it and if we just fragment it might we might not achieve the state of the art so we from the other uh, you know the the team the ten academy staff as well as adam staff will add whatever data they find but just to synchronize let's add also like you know i think it will be attached i will share the path uh, inside your machine you will find a folder which is going to be attached to s3 that means everyone has uh, can access it that you share every data that you get there according to its label whether it's clean raw processed or unprocessed um for um, and that way everyone knows what other groups found and what you know the efforts that they put okay so hopefully that is um clear okay fanuel did you want to say something uh yeah i'm gonna deviate a bit from what we're discussing since we're already focusing on the model part but about the project like uh, for today, what are the deliverables and uh, how would we, you know, summarize what we found for today since it's extending to another week? Yeah, I think so. I think it would have been uh, that that's one of the things I would have liked, just what has been done so far. I mean, but I think we know from the reports probably, uh, so you are going to submit still the reports. They, they, are, they are not the finals, even if they are called the finals. Um, and the deliverables are just what is there, like your whatever code that you had and whatever um, like the report just on exactly what, what has been done so far in your group. So I think just that. Um, and then on Monday, hopefully we will digest that. And you have to know as well, I think that we have been informed as well, maybe the quality of the grade might, of, you know, from last week's and stuff might not be good or my, you might not agree so in that case please alert us so that we can take a look again um but yeah okay. so today the deliverable is just you know the it's kind of another entry now it's not going to be the final but the report we should be you should really summarize your understanding because the more you summarize today for next week you really focus only on on what's yeah what's coming okay Good. Um, so is that group five now, Abraham? And who's in group five here as well? So, uh, Biniam, have you rejoined? And do you want to continue the? Okay. Uh, am I still yeah, it's 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 a strange type of up and down. But okay, continue a bit, and then if I can understand, I, then it's good. Okay, so what I'm what I'm trying to ask is that we would like to have you know a more standard type of group. That is my first question, and the second one is that uh, is there going to be another you know another round of like all the data that is created? And another round of what? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, to let me let me be very frank. I don't know much how what it would work, and I cannot tell you what. You are probably by now better than me at understanding some of these things. You can do I, you know, multiple fine tunings in steps. Um, definitely one thing i know is that if you find when you fine tune there there are limitations depending on how you fine tune whether you fine tune the last layer or you added a parameter right now in terms of if you are adding the the first if you are using the first part which is fine tuning the last layer then you actually are throwing out the previous if you took, for example fine tune once and then which was on on the last layer now you find you in another one with again the last layer then you you throw out the previous one so that's not good but if you are adding multiple parameters additional parameters at each fine tune 
then maybe that's not so that 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 is probably having you know it it actually is having for example the first one you fine tune it the last layer the second one you fine tune it um, maybe with additional parameter that way you can keep information so think about you know where is your fine tuning you're fine tuning basically by fine tuning you are adding information so are you overwriting the information are you overwriting it or are you adding it so you have to depending on that you have to be careful so normally there are two steps of fine tuning one is on the last layer such that you know that you Im you improve the base model and the second one is instructs um uh, fine tuning which is basically you add additional parameters but if you are doing multiple you have to be careful that you are not overwriting okay. also uh thank you for that and another one is uh, when you will win the parameter of the kind of training or yeah. like uh, you know you know it changes most of the day models to right so when i say the new model after some of our trainers my new model is like the size is basically make that mix so that has forgotten what it's having. So I'm not really sure how to ask this one, but it's yeah, I mean, uh, so there are there are as I said, depending on how you reset your model. So in the parameter fine tuning, in uh, you know, in the efficient parameter fine tuning or efficient fine tuning, that you could be starting from the weights so you have to know all the knowledge and information is about the weights you know so the weights you can think of them you move you move them in a certain direction now you know you can you can find you now and when you have another data you can find you it again as long as you don't reset then the information is there so it's just uh, you know you can either you know if, if you imagine you have 100 billion uh, data you can fine tune it in one go, or you can fine tune it in in three steps. Today one, tomorrow you know the other, uh, whatever, and the other whatever. So that that one is fine. That's not gonna be over. So your how you reset it is, is what matters. So that's what's called checkpoint. If you are starting from a checkpoint, then it's not a problem because the information is there. If you are starting, okay. yeah. So we're not. It's almost. I I I I didn't hear this one. Okay, so um, we have to use gradient checkpointing, right? And also, um, we have to merge the final model uh, that kind of Yeah, you have, to, you have to checkpoint. Yeah, you have to checkpoint and train from the checkpoint if you want to add more training instead of instead of maybe just the final dump which sometimes might lose certain parameter configurations for efficiency so i think again that's what you need to check what what they do at checkpoint versus what they do at the final dump model okay, so we have to let like, the models yeah so that, that's why some you can see some for example stable ai for example shared their checkpoints as well the last checkpoint before before changing their you know their learning rate and all that uh, into the final level the final epoch because that that has certain consequences so you you, you can read around that you know how to keep uh, checkpoints for further training or further fine tuning. Yeah, I mean, I, I am not hearing you. I'm guessing what you are saying. You know, so that's that has a very diff, you know issue on answering your question because a lot of the part is distorted. Um. But maybe, maybe you, you really should. I mean, if it's just only for today, okay. but other ones, you really should improve the mic because it seems uh, you're not being well understood. Uh, okay, 
now it's better maybe okay thank you i think i'm done okay when your mic is better now you're done so that's good <laughs> okay so good okay so let's go to group five in the interest of time as well and uh, then sorry, a bit. Yeah. can i can i go first i mean i want to add something about the fine tuning go. yeah uh, go. okay thank you uh so i, w I was thinking about the rag uh, and how we going to integrate it with our money can you mute okay yeah go on yeah yeah uh so the the after we generate the ad uh i was thinking to create a different uh i mean another uh vector database that will collect the ads we're creating uh, and if those ads are good we can put them in that vector database and an collect it and then <laughs> refine no, no 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 let, let me no you cannot that that basically is exceptionally expensive and not the, the usual way so the vector database is just only for retrieval so that means to find maybe examples to find context not to refine to okay so uh, fine tuning uh, is a different process retrieval mm -hmm. is a different process yes so, like in a very 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 simple short answer retrieval and putting context is called con in context learning in context means the the learning happens in the inside the context so that means without are all changing the weights while fine tuning is changing weights so they are very two different things so uh, in maybe i should explain it better uh yeah. what i mean is that uh let's say we were able to generate this ad right mm -hmm. this is the ad that we want to uh put it in the telegram mm -hmm. so uh i was thinking to collect those generated uh, ads and then not in a vector space i know what 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 you mean there uh collect it and later to refine the or retune the the, the model uh, yes. at some checkpoint yeah. so that it can learn more uh, and more about the ads that was uh, uh trying to say if yeah. that is not it yeah okay so uh, so what if you are meaning, for example, the performance of, let's say, you add, you, let's imagine that you have a human raters, and then, so the, the model generates um, an ad, and then you tell it, this is not good, and then you tell it, oh, this is good. So that one is fine, you know, it's called supervised uh, or reinforcement learning, Yeah. and that will improve it, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So th this, uh, in that case, that's, yeah, that's what... Um, open AI does in there mm -hmm. so yeah I mean that's right. good in yeah. supervise in a reinforcement sense that that yeah yeah but you can't store that inside vector database yeah, bubble as we know like we only have no 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 that was that wasn't but what is the point I mean my, my, my always my always argument is that vector database is just a database you can store anything you want but in just just for the context when we think of vector database, what we are saying is semantic search. Yes, Do you need which, semantic is, search? Is, which is like, like, like let's assume a, a banana has a value of 1001, like for example, and that will be stored inside the vector database. Then any word has, uh, or at least have similarity characters to the word banana, then might have similarity with it, isn't it? Sure, but I mean, how do you want to train it? I mean, I think the, the, the question is, so you no, want uh -huh. what i'm trying to say is that when yaya is saying is that in a case of scenario that that an ad's been generated and somehow it's good let me store it on vector database and that actually we we will lose quality might be and also like the fact of 
storing it into vector database, you have yeah. no other risk that yeah, yes, yeah, like there is no relationship in it. Sorry, Nasrallah. Mm -hmm. I refined my. <laughs> it, it's not to the the um, a vector database. Uh, it, it's just a data that we want to refine the the uh, the language model. Not, yeah, not so it's, it's it, the vector yeah. database was a misnomer. So yeah, just wherever you store it, it is about reinforcement learning, and that is good. So basically, just a simple answer is that if you tell LLM what is it's you know when it generates what's good or what's not, criticizes how to improve it, that is really good. And it you know there is a framework called reinforcement learning, and that's what OpenAI is doing and really improves a lot with a small even number of data. So. Uh, okay, so my perception was actually based on vector database and it's very costly and also there is no logicality in vector database, so we will lose that part, but clear. No, I mean, I think, I, I think again, vector database is not that different from uh, any other database, right? Just a Postgres. It's, it's, it can store many of, depending on many of the vector stores have exactly the same nature as Postgres or MySQL plus uh what is called vectors they can store efficiently vectors index vectors so in a way when you think of a vector database versus postgres i think one one should only think do i want you know do i want semantic search and do i want a noise SQL database if you satisfy two i think then vector database just let's let's not drag it but it's it's very you know, it's fine to store anything. We store in Ten Academy many things in in vector in our in Wavet, um, because sometimes it helps us. But uh, okay, so let me stop it there because I think it was uh, more of a uh, yeah, yeah. from our main uh, discussion. Okay, there are discussions in um, in the chat that I am not answering. Uh, just let me answer before I go to week uh, the group fight. I mean, it's very interesting, Alexander, the example you gave because this is what it falls in between the two one is it's like badekika server is a type of you know promotion um and then up to some point it is and then after another point it's much more of an information so it's very interesting and i would say it it, it can fall given that it has a promotion component that it can fall as add but this could be another its own separate uh, ad formation or ad information. Um, but yeah, you could call it ad, ad this one, but this is interesting. This is a very interesting example where you have an ad and then an information together. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, so, so he, he, here, uh, this is w one row. So I can, in, in our document, in our data, there are uh, ID and text date and the uh, category types yeah is, is, is category here, here, type? you know, this is telecommunication or media um and you can you can say it's an ad so the only thing this is where it becomes an interesting problem and you know very interesting actually is what if this was generated by llm is this an ad or you know because we want the llm to generate an ad in this case i think it is most likely this can be generated by llms and we want to punish it for that because we want just we don't want information uh too much information in an ad uh, small information one sentence is fine but the so you could consider it this one to be noise an ad but with a higher noise so that means you can uh, i mean for now we don't have we haven't considered that case so you could just actually call it or this is not an ad and and if you want a quality ad data you you should say this is not an ad but if you if you are okay if your number of ads are small you can say this is an ad so i think it falls in, the, in between okay so sorry for interruption the other group so uh, i think the number of uh ad category in the categories number of ads are very small so uh, does we make data balance between the presence of ad and not ad? No, do not. Can we yeah. make balance? Which one, sorry? Uh, does we make our artificial data to... I, I, I think, as we said, we will really get enough data. 
So it should be fine. Okay. Okay. So I think we can consider this one to be not an edge. So okay. yeah. Um, okay. Um, so is there on the edge generation? But yeah, I think I already answered Biniam your last question. Arelche. Um, okay. So let's continue. So we have now or two groups remaining, right? Group five and six. Did group two go? I'm not sure, but group Abraham. What are your suggestions? So I think as uh, Hussein said, probably let's make sure that we round up and then also that uh, the conclusions from this discussion are very clear. So from the first one, data is fine and we can enrich and there is a positivism. From the set group four, so that was group three, group four was uh, more that there is a data issue as well and there was also a loading issue. And, but that can be solved because we know some people, Abdul Hamid, for example, solved and others solved. And then from group one, we know that they have found an improved um, tokenizer and that there are a number of other things that is working, but it's also positive and data can be, they have found also other data sets. And then the conclusion of that led to actually we should is store all the data in one place so that everyone accesses that, you know, whatever model they are trying, uh, it is tried on the same model. It's not. It's in the same data. It's not the matter of data that actually distinguish what is good and what is not good. So that is in our interest. And then there are others just in the discussion that were yes, uh, using reinforcement learning, human learning actually can be very good, and that is what OpenAI does. So with that, now let's continue. What are the conclusions and the discussions that Group Five has? So Abraham. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, so uh, most of the things were raised, so I think it would be wise to just address a few things uh, because most of our questions were also answered. Uh, and uh, let me just start with our questions. So yes, we have been, uh, let me just start with uh, what we have progressed and uh, about the postponed uh, time of uh, deliver, deliver, uh, project delivery. Uh, we think that would be very helpful because we have been taking time on trying to generate a, perf a, a good ad so that uh, we can have a final, final, we can have a good ad finally. Uh, we believe that that would be all led by the, the quality of the data. So we've been taking time uh, addressing the issues on the data. Uh, yesterday we were, we were planning to go into the fine tuning and head on to the rest of the pro project, but when we heard that we would have more, more time, we decided to take a little more time on the data. Uh, and as for the data, we had questions, a few questions. Uh, so we on our channel, on one of the Telegram channels, we've been getting English ads. And so uh, on the documentation, it said that uh, we would be generating Amhari card, of course, but... Uh, so if that is the case, it's, it's a mistake. I mean, it's probably a noise, so we should throw them. I mean, uh, it says like we should be generating Amharic ads, uh, posts given so on the, Amharic or English mixed document. So if it, if it is I, mixed, it's fine, but it's purely English, then it doesn't help. That's what I mean. So okay. if it is a mixed Amharic, uh, English, then it's fine because most sometimes do that. But you know, the product name can be in English or the thing can be in English and then, or it's a mix. Uh, I think all of that is fine. But if it's purely English, then I think we don't that that's basically that doesn't help us okay yep. okay so okay. It's, it's just out of purely out of that it doesn't help us you know um, not that it will be a, an issue more it's much more yeah okay okay sure so that being said uh, we plan on uh trying so we try we plan on uh experimenting more uh, given we have more, more time uh, so that we can have a quality ad in the end. Uh, as for uh, me, that would be it. Maybe if or other my of what are uh, my other teammates have something to add, I'll yeah. leave the room for them. Okay. Who is in group five? Is Magdessa you in group five? No. Which group are you? Um, or Hussein? Oh yeah, we had Hussein. I think. He okay. Just... Yeah, maybe Hussein. Yeah. yeah, he's there. Same. Can you see? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so uh, most of the questions have been uh, answered because the other group members have mentioned them. So I only wanted to uh, add that you mentioned we could we could uh, use the data positively. So shouldn't there be like a deadline for the data? Maybe like yeah. so that we can prioritize it. So yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I agree. I think we, we are gonna do that. Uh, of course, we don't discourage adding data, even if at later times, uh, but definitely the major data that everyone has been working or everyone has found, just so that we have a clarity on how much tokens do we have and how much, you know, also the tokenization ultimately, what is good tokenization should be, you know, such that when you model, when you compare models, we have to distinguish what actually makes the model better. Is that the lack of data or the, you know, the availability of more data so that we have a good comparison among models we should have yeah the majority of our data that we're going to use probably um, uh, by Monday to one common repository. And then at least with one tokenizer, we should count how many tokens in total we have generated because that will tell us, you know, later, these informations are important. You know, uh, when we speak like, you know, is it 100,000, 1 million tokens, 1 billion tokens, you know, we don't know that one. Um, and so, we should also learn about the quality of that, you know, where does they come from, the source. So generating a data card, the same as a model card is important. So we will probably assign a few people to help there as well um, on generating the model, as long as we have a source, you know, channels and everything. Um, so if it's chain Telegram, it's fine because it contains channel names, channel ID, and we can search from channel ID to channel name. But yeah, it's useful, um, definitely. We will try to finalize many of whatever data we can find there, but adding more data is not discouraged. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, I think so. What is so there is a positivism here as well. And what do you foresee in group five? You know, do you see that you can achieve something, you know, based on what you are what where you are, you are now? Um is it positive? Is it feeling? What are the challenges or um, roadblocks that you might you in, you foresee? Is it Abraham or Hussein or anyone from that group? Okay, Abraham. Uh, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't be expecting the the road to be all clear or all set, but uh, we believe that. Uh, as long as we are all in this together, I mean, most of them are addressing the issues we haven't even faced yet. So we'll be cautious of that and also have uh, faced some and tackled some. So I think we would have, we would be able to work along as long as everyone is updating their side. So I think we have a positive angle from that. Wonderful. Yeah, huh? yeah. so that's great. You know, that's good. And I, I just want to say, Knowing how much Telegram's Amharic translation is good, I believe, you know, that's one motivation. I believe using, you know, Amharic, uh, Telegram has a lot more data sets for Amharic compared to many others and probably also quality. So as long as we extract many of the channels that are Amharic and identify collectively and, and group, we could generate something that is very valuable. Um, and, you know, even that the data, we can release it as, you know, court ace data to the world in a sense, because it's very important. So that's why I'm saying, let's really make sure that we use it, we generate something, we can publish from it something, you know, a collective one work, either in the form of one blog or in the form of a paper or in anything, and we release data as well as model to the world as well so that they can use, um, and this would be a good contribution. Um, so, yeah, okay, maybe this. Group two. So what's okay, your group's thinking? You? Yes. Yeah, we uh, were able to run the Gary model and it somehow understand the American reply in Amharic. But uh, our blockers was like, 
uh, we couldn't uh, run the model in every one of our computers because we get uh, out of the memory space. Mm. So if there are any means we can get use the model like on the same folder for the group, if you can help us on that. So, so what does it mean is that that uh, AWS machine runs out of uh, GPU memory to run Gary model? No, it runs, but we can't run on every co every computer of us, like for all members. When we ah, run yes, the model of for each of us, of then... Yeah, so, in that case, I mean, it's a group. Who is the group leader? Should be coordinating this. Not everyone should be... There has to be time and location. Like if you are working and you have to inform that I'm I'm running because otherwise exactly, yeah, the memory is the same. The GPU memory is the same. So if everyone runs, you don't run it. So, so it's a matter leader, of time or it's a I'm matter of time. Leader, yeah. So it's a matter of time. So if you run it now and when you finish, you clean and then other one runs, that's fine. But you can't run at the same time. It's like you know, many processes in your RAM, you know, at some point you run out of RAM. If many processes are to run, so I would say just coordinate. You know, what? Why are they running the model? Is that to test? So then there should be only a dedicated team who's testing, and then when they, you know, when they finish that test, maybe you run, you improve the model by doing this or doing that. But if everyone is running, then it's not, you know, it will not fit. You know? Okay. So it's so about finding, finding, you know, work plan. Who's doing what when? Uh, wh wh whenever it requires, whenever it requires GPU RAM, you should be you know, you should be careful because there's only one, and the model consumes much more of the RAM. Okay, that's a good point. And also, uh, if I don't get you uh, mistaken, you just mentioned that we need to compare uh, di fine different fine tuning, either from like the tokenization method or the model we used yeah so what so it means yes ultimately not not one group only but for example your group might be using you know stable ai another group falcon another group so your group might be testing two llama and uh, microsoft Fi, and another group might be llama and mistral another group maybe mistral and stable ai another group is um falcon and llama you know, so then later, if we use similar things, if, if our test strategy is similar, then they can be compared. So now they can be compared purely from based on their base model, what they were, you know, when they were released, the knowledge they have, plus their architecture structure or anything. So that way it will help. So, but your your group should only be working not more than two models, unless you, you have a bandwidth to do so. Um, so it's and then but then have a consistent tokenizer as well just so that it's not you know yeah so i think that one we will share it's, a, it's called a pool knowledge that means everyone should share what they found the tokenizer and which tokenizer they use most likely i'm assuming that most people are going to use a uh, sentence piece as their tokenizer um um or like finding the vocabulary like and then then they probably use their own embedder uh, embedding model, or they might be using another embedding model. Again, that one, um, I think each each model comes with its own embedding, but you can it, it may be also be compatible with other um, embedding. Um, and I think the rest is more or less the same. It's whether it, I think most people are going to be doing parameter fine tuning, but if you are happy to fine tune just the last layer, that's also fine. It takes a little bit more space and time, maybe um but it's just much more this is called model cards you know what are you doing and how you you know how's your final model is constructed okay thank you is that is that clear yeah okay good um abdul hamid so i have a one question regarding the tokenizers yeah so the model we're using currently has its own tokenizer uh, yeah. they they created a magic tokenizer so if you wanted to like create our own tokenizer and then compare between them, like what exactly are we going to compare? In that sense, maybe not much, but you can actually say how much parameter efficient it is. For example, um, if you give it different Amharic text, 
how much tokens does it use for example for for the same thing some of them they they are bad which means they really take more tokens all the time and uh, good ones are of course it's you know good is a balance it's not there isn't one way but it, they are actually over average statistically speaking for many many variety of amharic texts they use in average less vocabulary those are good good organizers okay so it's it's a you know it's a balance between <clears throat> character by character tokenizer would encode so many things but it's very bad because it doesn't the, the tokens doesn't have that much meaning they're not related to word or meaning while yeah. the other ones that actually contain that has much longer sequence in their token then they can't embed you need lots of vocabulary to actually contain many amharic context because you know phrases are infinite so it's yeah. the balance between them so in average statistically speaking if a tokenizer has less tokens, usually it's considered good. But that means for statistically very diverse samples. All right. One additional question I have on the fine tuning part. Yeah. So, uh, like, there's two steps to this. First, we'll be just uh, dumping all the Telegram file into the model and let it learn the Amharic language. So, once it learns the Amharic language, we'll then be using the labeled data so that it determines which is an ad and which isn't an ad. Yeah. But later on, when we are using the rug, we are just giving it a brief of, of, of a product and then uh, uh, letting it generate an ad for us, right? Yeah. Uh, but when we are fine tuning it, we are not brief. We are giving no, it. We are giving it using context, called context. So you will have instruction, context, answer. So with that, you know with that instructional way um you are actually giving it a context it will consider context so you have to know what type of instruction you know what type of uh, uh, supervised fine-tuning you're doing but most of them will have context so for example like in our case let's say there is an ad for a mobile phone yeah. so if i this we are giving it the mobile phone ad and then we are taking an ad for a mobile phone right yeah what exactly is the context in this case in the, so that's what i i was saying in in principle you you should have context about for example for in our case if it's a media if it's like you know generate context that are called you know telecommunication all of the telecommunication their descriptions there are two color communications in ethiopia and uh, they are you know, Safari comment, um, tele comment, you know, whatever. And then they are this and they are that. So that could be your context when when the ad is about telecommunication. When it's retail, maybe just uh, that context is very hard to know. It's like you can have a general context. When it's a bank, you can give it about bank context. So even if you don't give it during training context, you could still, during inference, you might still use it context. So it's fine even if you don't particularly use context to fine tune it even because of its in context learning it will still learn from context um what your instructions but if you want to improve it one strategy is to you know to create for every category a simple context that that tells it what what they are and how they work all right all right thank you Okay, so your group, just in summary, group five, do you have do you do you have a positive feeling and the challenges are addressable? And um, what what are like kind of conclusions or suggestions, feedbacks um, on the continuation of the week? So so we are group two. Ah, um, group two, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So till last night, we were trying to load the model logistics model since they have already created a model a model that can understand Amharic and also respond in Amharic. We are trying our best to have that working. So mm -hmm. starting from this morning, we, we did uh, get a positive result from the model. We are yeah. able to run it and it does uh, respond with Amharic. Um, so I think we, adding up on this would really uh, help us a lot since it already knows some Amharic. It has been trained, they said, about uh, around 3.8 
billion tokens or million tokens if i have not mistaken i think it's billions yeah yeah so so it does have some advantage over starting from like scratch um so i i guess we do have something that will really help us for next week okay so you are positive you will get something done and more accurate results yeah wonderful okay so then we have one more group to go um group six what's your feeling anyone from group six yes yeah. thank you is it a what feeling or what we found it yeah so what you found and you know based on your experiments so far the limitations you have encountered the challenges that you have faced the opportunities you have seen now that there's going to be one week and there is a business objective so what do you think you know will will the one week will help to get to the business objective um and what's yeah so what's your mood attitude and opinion on that okay um so in terms of um fine-tuning or the progress so far is that we were able to load the data set pre-process some of the the telegram data set and load it to the llm and try to get some output from it which is so far is doing fine but uh, actually the most of the concern has been addressed by other groups which is the major one is the data set itself um the data source um the lack of lack of that might be uh, might be what we are having issues with it but we do uh, we do have a couple questions actually to you so that we can know exactly what we need to look into so the first one is that um, my teammate uh, Ms. Ganus actually is the one who's doing the fine tuning and and he had a concern is that the input format so we have issues on the input format of the fine tuning or is it somehow it's not clear so it would be appreciated if you ask this question Okay, so which models are, are you trying to use? Mistral. Mistral. Yeah. Okay, and I mean, I, I think mm -hmm. we then we can come back to you. So in a way, what, I mean, is there no other already existing examples to find you on Mistral and the tutorials? I think I remember um, Nat Naya was trying that, so definitely he can probably next week give one tutorial, maybe just early in the Monday or, so there should be a very known format for each of them, how they, you know, for instruct versus for, but for the actual training, I mean, for the actual fine tuning of like the base model, in principle, it's an unsupervised, you know, unsupervised learning. So it means just, should just basically, you Dump give it, it in, yeah. yes. It should not be yeah, a problem, yeah. just a series of things. Yeah, go on, Scano. Okay, so my question, uh, so my concern was, I think we, what I thought was we are planning it to, to answer two questions. So if, if that is the case, I think we have to give it, we have to mm -hmm. train it like in question and answer format. That's what I thought. Uh, okay. So for, for the unsupervised learning, so if we give uh, some run, some Amharic data, let's say an article or PDF, so it might not answer to our questions, right? Yeah. Since so that's that's yeah. not that's not uh, yeah that's not yeah. Uh, instruct learning. That's just base base model unsupervised. So in the next phase of fine tuning, you do instruction learning. So that so, instruction fine tuning. Yeah. So for for the supervised learning, so after we we train, then we yeah for the unsupervised learning, so we use the label data to to yes. to, to train it to us to return to our questions. Is that the case? Yes. Yes. So, well, for example, this is, you know, earlier I mentioned, you categorize your, you know, it, or already the data is categorized mostly, and we are helping also to categorize, but you are also labeling it. And then from that label data, what happens is that you can tell it different ways. You can say, you know, you can give it a mix of um, add and non-add, and you ask it to distinguish that. It's a classification. And you actually say like, okay, here is you know, for this thing, I, I have an ad, just a part of an ad, uh, continue. So it's no question and answer, it's still generation in this case, right? Ultimately, what you want it more is exactly, you know, okay, here is a context, I want you to generate an ad. Okay, so you, you just give it some context and it will, it will continue generate. generating the ad? Exactly, yeah. 
and you give it an instruction so what to do so in this case i know you don't have a perfect instruction so that's why creating instruction is one step that you have to do so and that instruction requires a little bit of thinking um but i think the two that i suggested is to do it in a classification sense and then to say like okay you know generate um uh, an ad for you know here's an example here are examples and generate an ad uh, for let's say telecommunication or like retail uh, starting you know from that or was a hashtag of this and then you give Please, it let me interrupt you yeah. you have about it. While we're doing that fine tuning and or feeding the ads, even the ads itself could be in different format, isn't it? If I'm not mistaken. No, no, it's just the ad is a text. It's just another so, sequence of text. Okay, okay. That's the, so we will use that data set being labeled by each one of us as a groups and yes. try to use. Yeah, try to create instruction. And then, yes. because instruction means you know the end, but you know, after the instruction, what comes. So it's it's that, you know, training set and then label set. So you are, you are trying to create from one text, you might create number of, you know, that's called argumentation, a number of uh, label, you know, sample label um, row. And then that basically they are going to use. So the more, of course, you by hand fine tune it, that's what they, they, they say, RLHF then the better of course it can get because then it's very good at you know humans get feedback and humans rights instruction and then humans know what are most likely the case and then humans grade it you know in that part or they basically prepare data and then rlhf basically does that um so that the, through the reinforcement learning you increase the reward or decrease the reward but in a simple other way uh, that we should test quickly is just uh, earlier I said classification from classification you say like okay you know, here are hashtags whatever you can identify in a programmatic sense you can use it as your label and okay you know I, I want to generate a series of here, here are examples similarities for example um, similar ad and then maybe you determine to be in anyone in that category to be similar like as long as it's retail um, or uh, you you tell it just a media, and then but you yeah. give it yeah. So yeah. things like that are creativities like that we have to, right. each group has to yeah, bring. Yes, but here's the thing: it's more of guessing the next word, isn't it? Like trying to try to duplicate or regenerate using the no, the, the supervised is not the supervised is using back propagation from the. So the first one is mm -hmm. the unsupervised one is the next word. Yeah, but actually now we are on a stage of doing the unsupervised. We didn't even get to the supervised to be genuine. And um, we don't yeah. know we have this still we don't have a clear strategy of it. And it's just that um what we were thinking is actually to come up with other data set from different places, uh, but not related to it. And it's also another question has been mentioned by one of my teammates, Basilel, is that um on the Telegram data set, there is other language mixed with it. Like some of the text or some of the word could be uh, like Oromo, Oromia language. So uh, that itself um, might give a concern and also subjective terms. So I, he, she, they, them, all of those things. Also, uh, my, or the tokenization itself, it's, it's a bit confusing in terms of the Telegram data set that we have or being given. Um, and the other thing is, in other concern I would say is that social media Amharic, or let's say the Telegram Amharic, is not always the right right Amharic of, but, of we, training. But our, but our objective is not for anything else. So we want just a Telegram ad generator, right? The objective is that we're not tra running training you, for... Uh, no, we're uh, not training for a general Amharic understanding language, uh, LLM. I think that would have taken, um, you know, so just very clear, if we were to do that, we would have con connected with many government organizations to do it, okay? Because that, you know, these are not easy, you know, kind of, so the reason why I think this is useful is that 
a, a lot of these models are not going to be used. Many people try Amharic things or local language things, but they never see the allied production business. And in Ten Academy, we're all about do something, even if it is it means for one particular thing, it is actually used. Right? So it's that mentality. So it's not about creating Amharic general something. It's about one specific thing, let's do it, and is it doable? We answer that, one of them. If that's the case, then why we're actually missing the main thing, and I would say it as a suggestion, is that we're also lacking um, focus on the rag. And, uh, and the no, no, the rag is the rag only comes ne next. If you don't have a good LLM, then there is no rag. Rag only follows once you have a good LLM. So you're doing the, the very first part, the necessary evil part. So the necessary evil is something that generates well Amharic arts. Or no, no, right, Amharic text. And then on because you can't achieve that for a general one, you, then you fine tune it. To actually Amharic art, and then you create a, a um, so rag is basically control, nothing more. You know, if you think of rag, rag controls output. Basically, how, it, it, re it reduces hallucination. Rag is only advised devised for nothing more than that. Rag just basically by giving it a context that it doesn't have before, because normally in the training, if it has, you don't need rag, right? But because LLMs don't have latest knowledge latest context so you need a rag to give it a context it's about rag is nothing more generation is not yeah altered. i i understand that part and honestly i don't want to deviate from the first part I, I do have also ways for us to improve our rag implementations right yes uh, part of yes. The, the one but you must have if you don't have a good yeah good uh, good llm then there is no good rag understood so uh, let me come back to the llm then yeah. we'll go to the rag after it yeah. um so now what i understand is that or what we're trying to solve is that first we were thinking about um how we can make our llm at least understand amharic text yes um but at least even point, if not even if not the big amharic but just the ones that are used in ads let's say just in ad style because you know ads have different complex things right like some yeah. um some of the you know the emotes and structures and all that so um, um what how, how what about twitter twitter I mean, we could have but in twitter how to filter amharic is a very hard by itself is another but yeah, we, we could have, but then it's also not an ad. So in principle, we could use it for our base model, yes, Twitter. Not only Twitter, anything, as I said. But just we assume, you know, that I think it's already the Telegram Amharic is good enough. But for our case, that was the, the, the hypothesis. If you can get many more data, that's also good. But we didn't want to spend another six months collecting, you know, Amharic data. but. That was the reason. So Telegram is easy to to download. Telegram is many people write in Telegram, and it's the latest. So it's not just only some, you know, um, some type. It's humans. And most mostly, what you get in the Telegram is what actually users, you know, people write, uh, and it's not moderated in some sense. Like, and then it's also a lot more ads you can find there than anywhere else. Is there a way for us to, we as a Team 6, to scrape the Telegram also where we're thinking to do yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, you can download it. I mean, you have to know just, you can go to the channel and you can download it once you join the entire part. I thought we need somehow the access, the admin access yeah. for the, no? no? I think it's, uh, it's the parsing and the processing takes a little bit time if you want to get, so for example, for us, we also get views and stuff like that. So for that, we need the parsing. Um, but if you want just only the channels, then you could actually download them. So Nati can give on that, how he downloaded most of the data. And I think Monday, probably the very first thing would be about data. So Monday, we should conclude that thing as Hussein was saying, the data. And I think we should make sure you understand how the data was obtained. I think we have two pipelines, but we realized you could actually download for just this part, just simply. Okay. Join um, the 
channel. You can... Another thing that would be nice also if you guys give us some best practice of data preparation because even though the day we try to, the data is clean, but somehow what type of preparation we need to follow a best strategy for us so that we could feed it to the to the LLM and we could do the fine tuning. But I, I don't know about the rest of the team, but actually the data preparation is also a big concern for us as a team. Yeah, um, I mean, I think yeah. it's not only your team, but everyone's team. I mean, good quality data. That's why we are putting all the effort. But at the same time, let's not put everything and because there, there is a technical challenge and the understanding challenge that is also on the model. So some people should be really more also thinking how to, you know, like on the tokenization, on the embedding, on the um, overall, like, you know, training methodology. Uh, you know the the templates, the structures of the data, and that all of that it requires. So even if we have now super quality data, we still need all those to actually get to the business objective. So that's why in every group there, there should be a data uh, group, and then also these relevant other groups, members, sub sub members, sub groups. Right, right, awesome. Um, and I was saying actually. So that we could, um, might be, would be nice if each other teams share their output of as a report about their LLM, so that we could see their insight, and then be shareable by each by each group. Uh, not for today, of course, but um, um, any time soon will be appreciated. Because I honestly, we don't, we don't. I honestly don't know other and the other models that the teams use. And even though we experimented with Llama too, but somehow our our model is much better. But I would love to hear the others. Yeah, but at, at least you should try one, maybe the simpler other ones that others might not try, which is you know stable AI, maybe. Um, yeah, I will, yeah, I will. We will take a look into it. Actually, this is the first time um, I hear it. But yeah, it's in the yeah. challenge document, so it's just yeah, okay. No, I think this is good. So I think so. If I say then, um, what is the output? What is the like the summary of the suggestions? Again, data. So that's one. Um, I think almost every group shares. That's a high priority. Uh, we think without the data will be everything. So nothing will be done. But then there is another between group two and group six discussion. What emerged out and also what is commented is about the the understanding really exactly the instruction i think also from Ghana as well as you know these two steps has to be very clear so i would say by tuesday this should be demystified that the mm -hmm. formats for different models that we are fine-tuning should be very clear yeah. both yeah. in the wise and the, so okay so can you i mean again i'm not taking notes so if anyone so can you then uh take these notes like just exactly what comes out of this discussion data 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 one and the other part is um that maybe using uh, reinforcement learning as part of the uh, instruction and the third is uh that we really have to understand what the how do we fine-tune for instruction and it, clarity it, yeah sorry is it reinforcement learning is similar to re-ranking the output uh, it is much more different. Reinforcement learning would be scoring, basically rewarding and, and kind of, it is ultimately, uh, if you want to put it in that way, it's ranking, but it is telling, it's actually giving it through reward mechanisms. And the humans basically becomes now the reward, um, you know, they generate the reward. So normally in a pure reinforcement learning, you actually have a model that does like or the training data would basically tell it what is not you know what score it gets for doing something now in the reinforcement human learning part the humans tell it like when it generates what it does so it's basically um that, that but it's about the score it's it tells it the score I was seeing a Cogir uh, re ranking model, and, and actually, I was testing it on the RAG system to see it's in English, but not even though they have other language, but there is nothing for Amharic. Is that 
and when the user input a, a prompt or uh, or an input it try to actually um so the approach i was thinking so the, on the there are two different things There's, those are log probabilities driven so that they are model generated that's very different from human where actually you have a certain goal that you want to maximize and that you know reinforcement learning every time is about goal and so it's different in a way that the models you know accuracy whatever it's just these are different types of model thinking you can use another llm if it if it understands something to tell to to become it is a reward engine but in this case we're not going to use because there aren't that many um and it's also expensive if we are so so let's okay let me like the, the summary is that let's summarize this one so we need to be very clear about the templates or the formats of the instruction learning and unsupervised learning for um fine tuning and there needs to be data common data that we all use and probably a clear understanding of our tokenizers in different groups so that we have a base um and then data is highly enriched that we have enough data and we have to count and prepare data you know model card as we go and reinforcement learning is could be one uh we can try at least and is there any other and then yeah the challenge is basically these are what of course there are unforeseeable ones but these are the foreseeable ones is there anything that i missed and I think this, so these summaries, if one can share, I think last time Abraham shared uh, like that, just the summaries in, in um, uh, Slack. So if one is able to share this, just as the summary that comes out from this discussion, that would be great. And I know many people have put hands, but we didn't have the chance to go through, but at least all the six groups seem to be positive with caution. And um, that's good. But I think there is clarity and there is positivism here overall. OK. I have uh, a question. If yeah. we... OK, uh, the first question will be uh, if you clarify about the today's deliverables. And uh, one of my concern is if we we are working on the server, like six of us. so. If uh, we want to push to a git, we configure our terminal with uh, our credential. So, uh, like, it will, it, it will be come one contributor, even though yeah. we contributed. So, the, does that so matter? Or? Very, yeah, it matters for our way of analyzing. So, instead, if you could have just, if you could, I mean, you can tell us at least that user name. Uh, but it would really make us very hard now. Uh, tell us this, I think it's good you, you raised that. If you could have configured just with your everyone's, when they contribute their username, I think that's the only way we know how, I mean, in this group, given that all groups are happy and every, everybody's contributing well, if you are happy, we can change that like to be okay you know everyone in that group contributed well so we don't have to do the waiting um and otherwise it will be a disadvantage for other people so maybe just maybe just if you let's make it this way for this week we believe that everyone seems to contribute and if not the group leaders should tell us at least the waiting um of contribution does that, would that work? Yeah, if we consider as a group the Git contribution, uh, it will work. Okay, yeah. so I mean, it, it may, it, it's not about only one group for us, you know, the system setup is that, so what we are gonna ask if everybody happy is that the group leaders, they can talk to their group members and then they give us a weight of contribution, just like in a paper, if you write a technical paper, you would give like, you know, who's the first daughter, second daughter, whatever. And then you might say, oh, no, everybody contributes equal, so this is alphabetical. So we will ask that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, this was one of my question. Uh, and Magdas has already raised it. Uh, we have deleted all the uh, models that we downloaded so that we can have uh, 
a one folder that we all gonna work on rather than running it uh, separately so that th this this should work uh, okay. maybe yeah, i think we're happy i mean i think i think our mechanism handles either equal contribution or contribution by um username it doesn't have any other configuration so we will ask um the final way to be yeah by from group leader so we'll connect with group leaders to at the end they should tell us the contribution weight so either equal or you know this or that okay yeah does that address yeah. your question mubarak yeah yeah uh, about the deliveries for today yeah. the deliverables today is just the usual just uh, like the entry but the report should say just what you have achieved what what has been found i mean basically the summary of this discussion i didn't ask exactly what what you have found what you have achieved but it's important just what you have achieved the results let's imagine this is the last day what have you what have you achieved that just a report okay please okay. sorry abeba yeah. uh this report should be uh, individual or individual group? yes individual what you know the individual rights on behalf what they contribute what they have achieved what the group achieved so just basically to to really give everybody an, a place a time where they summarize the, the the real wins the real challenges and the you know things in terms of an actual work sense okay good uh, okay Binyam, and this should be the last so that we don't really run more than two hours okay I mean, we're more than two hours but not too much okay yeah this is a small question it's not really that much of detail and I hope my voice is clear now, is it? Very clear. I don't know what you were doing before. Okay, okay. So, um, um, uh, depending on the data that we have, it is, you know, unstructured. So, I think we have taken it the wrong way, trying to, you know, fine tune. I think instead we were supposed to pre-train the models. So, am I right? Like, um, Instead of fine tuning, I think we should use the term pre training when we train it on an unstructured data, right? Yeah, that's so, true. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. That. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that that's that's why I think words are have a so normally I just say training based model just so that I don't confuse because pre train is also another like loaded word, but exactly it's it's a concept of pre training. Okay, so fine tuning comes after. The pre training it's yeah but you know in fine tuning even there are two one is just the parameter efficient the one that just adds uh, parameters and the other one is on the the last layer so that last layer fine tuning you are calling it pre-training now but it actually can be it's also actually in the past it's purely was fine tuning that was what was called fine tuning before parameter efficient fine tuning but for now because we know we are not training, pre-training ourselves. We don't have 256 or you know, thousands of GPUs. So when we say pre-training, we know what it means. It means the other type of fine tuning. Okay, thank okay. you. You're welcome. And uh, Abraham, no, I didn't say it, it has, a, uh, the last week problem has problem. But if you feel, because we are now mixing humans human validators and ai grade at the same time so that you as you can see some of you, you receive a much more detailed feedback so if you feel something is not good you're you know you don't agree you should report it to us so that we can take a look even if already people have looked at it and verified but sometimes there is a mistake and i think i only just say because i've received one and so i said maybe if there is we should tell you but if you are happy and if it's reasonable, then it's fine. So it's not saying it was wrong. It's, yeah. Wonderful. I know that I've taken some good chunk of your time, but I think this discussion will make it very clear. Uh, yes, you can connect to your instance. I think your instance is still uh, was uh, stopped when I see it, when I refresh uh, Rudolph or group four. Uh, but if you go to your 10X and you switch it on, I think it should work. If it doesn't work, let me know and I will I will help. Okay, wonderful. And anyone else who had 
filled the form and we didn't have access also until yesterday i also updated yesterday so everybody should have access uh, 41 people as they should have access now okay wonderful thank you so much and um, hopefully it made it very clear and the next week is much more clear thanks guys and if there is 10